Imagine being 2020 and yet still failing your driver's license test. Yes, glaucoma can do that. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Jeffrey Tran and I'm a board certified ophthalmologist. And today, I'm gonna to tell you everything you need to know about glaucoma. But before we begin, let's go over a few key things in anatomy. This is a picture of the eye. In the very front, you have the cornea. That's the part that you touch when you put your contact lens inside the eye. This right here is the lens. This is the part that becomes a cataract as you get older. This right here is the iris. This is the colored part of your eye. In some people it's brown, in others it's blue. And this is the retina. It's like the camera sensor for your eye. And lastly, this is the optic nerve. The optic nerve is a part that connects the eyeball to the brain. Think about how a USB cable connects a camera to a computer. Eye doctors like myself divide glaucoma into open angle glaucoma and closed angle glaucoma. Let's first start by talking about open angle glaucoma. In open angle glaucoma, remember, the angle is open, so the fluid made inside the eye can reach the trabecular meshwork, aka the drain of the eye. However, these drainage canals may get clogged over time, so even though fluid is reaching the drains, it may not be flowing out the eye fast enough. This leads to an increase of pressure inside the eye. What happens in your house when the drain backs up? Fluid collects in the sink, right? Meaning, the pressure rises. And when this pressure rises, this is what damages the optic nerve. There are some key risk factors for this type of glaucoma. The first is age. As you get older, the likelihood that you get glaucoma increases. Family history. Odds are, if your family members have had a strong history of glaucoma, you probably will get glaucoma as well. Ethnicity. There are certain races that have increased risk of open angle glaucoma. Specifically, African Americans are at an increased risk of this type of glaucoma. And of course, having high eye pressures is a risk factor for glaucoma. Next, what symptoms can you expect? In early stages of glaucoma, there really isn't any symptoms. In fact, that's why glaucoma is nicknamed the silent thief of sight because there are no symptoms. However, end-stage glaucoma, though, can lead to significant peripheral vision loss. Take a look at this driving video. Notice how early on that subtle corner of vision loss. That peripheral vision blind spot can expand over time, and this process can take years, if not decades. However, as that peripheral blind spot gets bigger, it eventually affects the central vision as well. But take a look right before you lose that central vision, you can still have 20-20 vision because you can see that car in the distance, but everywhere else is blind. I've seen so many patients who have end-stage glaucoma who come to me because they got in the very first car accident because they couldn't see that car in their expanded blind spots. If the symptoms are so subtle, what can you do? Start with the basics by going to your eye doctor routinely. Early detection is key. Once the optic nerve is damaged, there is nothing we can do to reverse that damage. During an eye exam, the eye doctor will check for glaucoma by doing a couple basic things, such as checking your eye pressures. We can also do a scan of the optic nerve. We can even test your peripheral vision by doing a visual field test. And of course, the eye doctor would take a look and examine the optic nerve and the angles. I think analogies are a great way to think about the treatment of glaucoma. Remember that sink analogy that we talked about earlier? Well, here it is again. What do you do if your sink is overflowing? The easiest thing to do is just to turn down the faucet. That's where glaucoma eye drops come in. They decrease the production of fluid. What else can you do if your sink is clogged? Well, you can always pour Drano. Drano will help your existing pipes work a little bit better. That's kind of how glaucoma lasers, specifically laser trabeculoplasty works. It works with your existing drainage system and allows it to flow better. Lastly, if your sink is so clogged that turning down the faucet and pouring Drano doesn't work, what else can you do? Well, obviously you can call the plumber to repipe the entire sink. Of course, this is going to be the most expensive, right? Well, that's actually a good way to think about glaucoma surgery. Glaucoma surgery is usually one of the last resorts that we utilize for the treatment of glaucoma. 
However, there is a new type of glaucoma surgery called minimally invasive glaucoma surgery. We often incorporate this type of glaucoma surgery much earlier in the treatment of glaucoma. And that was a very quick overview of open angle glaucoma, but now let's transition to talk about closed angle glaucoma. And specifically, let's highlight a couple of key differences. Unlike an open angle glaucoma, in a closed angle glaucoma, the angle between the iris and the cornea is much smaller. So the fluid made inside the eye has a lot more difficulty reaching your eye's natural drains at the trabecular meshwork. This leads to an increase in pressure and damage to the optic nerve. There are several specific risk factors for this type of glaucoma. The first is being farsighted. If you're farsighted, meaning without glasses, you see very well far away but have difficulty up close, usually that means that your eye is very small. When it's very small, everything's a little bit more crowded, and as a result, the angle is also narrowed too, leading to an outflow obstruction. Another risk factor is being of Asian American descent. People of Asian descent are at an increased risk of developing this type of glaucoma. Age is also another risk factor for narrow angle glaucoma. The symptoms of closed angle glaucoma are usually different than that of open angle glaucoma. Oftentimes, these symptoms are very rapid and sudden, and it's important to recognize this. The first is severe eye pain. When the angle is closed, the pressure quickly rises and can lead to a variety of symptoms, including severe eye pain. Patients often state it feels like a 10 out of 10 eye pain. Blurred vision. When the pressure quickly rises, the cornea can become swollen, leading to blurred vision. And also, you get pretty bad headaches with symptoms of nausea and vomiting as well. However, there are some patients with narrow angle glaucoma who don't have those symptoms. And why is age a risk factor for narrow angle glaucoma? Remember the anatomy? As you get older, the lens becomes more dense and sometimes grows a little bit bigger. As it gets bigger, it pushes the iris forward. When it pushes the iris forward, what happens to the angle? It gets a little bit more narrow. Narrow angle glaucoma is a medical emergency. You need to seek treatment ASAP. That's because the rapid and significant rise in eye pressure can severely damage that optic nerve. If you don't take care of this right away, this can lead to significant permanent vision damage. And how do we diagnose this and how do we take care of this? Well, just like open angle glaucoma, it starts with a physical exam. We take a look at the optic nerve, we look at the angle directly using lenses, and of course, we can do visual field tests and scans of the optic nerve. But the treatment is a little bit different. Primary treatment goal of narrow angle glaucoma is to lower the pressure. So the first thing we do is, of course, utilize eye drops to decrease the production of fluid inside the eye. And similar to open angle glaucoma, in narrow angle glaucoma, we also use glaucoma laser. But this laser is a little bit different. This glaucoma laser is called a laser peripheral iridotomy, which means that you're making a small opening in the peripheral iris. This is important because it creates a bypass channel so that fluid made in the back of the eye can quickly reach the angle. And of course, in some cases, you do need to proceed to surgery, including glaucoma surgery to help lower the pressure. Sometimes addressing the narrow angles by doing cataract surgery is another good option. Remember, that cataract is pushing everything forward. When you remove that cataract, the angle opens up. Anyways, I hope you found a quick overview about open angle glaucoma and narrow angle glaucoma to be very helpful. And don't forget, as always, your eyes tell. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.